Hello my soccer universe, a slightly earlier spot, the reason being that the international uh, fixtures get rolling uh, relatively early on so I decided yeah let's get this video in about what to watch for in the international break because I always say it and I never under, under understand it especially in the English speaking world, Great Britain, but I also hear it in other, other leagues, no one really likes international break and I always like it. I'm always looking forward to the national teams. I always like the slightly more relaxed pacing of it. So it's always welcome for me to have that break. So what uh, we want to do in this video, I want to see, we only focus on the European qualifiers here. So we have Euro qualifying coming up. Um, we're going to see how things stand. What are the key matches that you should watch out for uh, during the international break and then of course, we also look a little bit ahead to the Euros already. Who are the favorites in the way? For this video, I decided to wear Spain. Not only are they kind of the nation of the moment, having won first the Nations League, then the Women's World Cup. But, you know, there's also a whole lot of things going on in Spain surrounding uh, potentially former Federation President Ru Rubiales, who I still find quite unfathomable that he hasn't resigned. Haven't made a video on that, but I think it has been all over the news. The KISS affair after the World Cup final, it is just absolutely disgraceful what was happening there. And I hope that someone will remove him rather soon. And the entire story with hunger strikes and fake... Um, resignation then in order to stand on it's it's just the worst thing but i th honestly think while it definitely overshadowed the triumph of the uh, uh, women's team i actually think it's good this ha happening this way because this is the way the change is happening so you know like kind of a silver lining going back to the men's national team i found the response from the men maybe a little bit underwhelming i mean luis de la fuentes the national team coach got under some critics from what about, what about here i think he made an uh, honest apology for his behavior there uh the men's national team also made kind of a weakish statement uh but ultimately coming out against the rubiales and yeah, uh, we have uh, players like Borja Iglesias uh, saying that yeah, we're not going to play for the national team as long as Rubiales is there. The problem is that uh, Borja Iglesias is probably not the main Spanish striker. I think it would have been better if, well, you know, one of the bigger stars would come out this way. But be it as it may, I think the Spanish national team is under a lot of spot uh, Spain is Spain as a country and the national football is on a lot of spotlight at this very moment. And even more so because Spain actually has a little bit of an uphill climb for quality qualification. They are one of three teams that played in the Nations League Final Four that actually have to get wins. Probably even two. One is, of course, uh, the Netherlands, uh, who probably are the weakest looking of these. And then, of course, Italy, where you're never, never sure. Italy now also is the other big, big story. Have a new national team coach in Luciano Spalletti, the guy who got Napoli uh, to win the championship after uh, Roberto Mancini stepped down in a really, really weird manner. Uh, more or less citing differences with the federation that uh, the Italian F federation president completely denied and only to sign up for Saudi Arabia a little bit later on. To be honest, it just does not make a good picture for Mancini. Uh, uh, but to be frank, while I didn't necessarily want him to leave after uh, failing to qualify for the World Cup because I think he had something going, Everything that Italy have shown since was kind of mess, so probably they need a little bit um, of a new boost. And I think with Luciano Spalletti, they got a really good candidate right there. So that I think is rather exciting. Of course, Antonio Conte was also in the mix. But I think Luciano Spalletti is a better candidate for that uh, with all his idiosyncrasies. So yeah, those are the three spot, uh, nations under the spotlight. The fourth one, of course, is Germany, but they only play friendlies. But there the talk is that if Hansi Flick uh, just loses one more, he's gone. And, you know, there are a few lined up. And curiously, Julian Nagelsmann has not taken a new job yet because, you know, he's kind of circling around Dortmund. But he's 
potentially eyeing the Germany job, which I'm not sure is good for him, but be it as that may. Let's look at where things stand. I mean, uh, the three nations that I've talked talked about are in groups A through C. Spain, after losing to Scotland back in March, basically need to get wins, wins, wins uh, to stay on track. I mean, it's top two. Georgia and Norway have not really been uh, pulling out trees, so I think that should be fine. The Netherlands have a much steeper hill to climb there because Greece is already ahead ahead of them, and Ireland is also in the mix. Although I I have a feeling that Ireland may fall, fall away. I think it's between Greece and the Netherlands. Of course, the Dutch, you would assume, is the stronger nation. But I think this is a Greece team on the up. And I actually wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't mind if Greece does toss it and then the Dutch come in through a potential playoff. But let's see about that. Italy, as I said, Ukraine and North Macedonia, those are the opponents. And they're not easy opponents. England, far away. Then, uh, Croatia, yes, also, but uh, have been in the final, final four, but I, I'm, I'm not worried about Croatia, despite Turkey uh, doing quite, quite, quite well. Uh, the Czech Republic is doing uh, really well. Poland is another team under uh, humongous scrutiny, as is Sweden, uh, who will later on play Austria, and they definitely need a win there. But at the moment, this group is pointing, luckily for me, Austria to Austria and Belgium. Then Hungary and Serbia are the dominating forces in their uh, groups. Group H is seemingly a free fall with the Danes a little bit faltering. At the moment it's Finland up top, uh, which I find uh, curious. Uh, Switzerland and Romania potentially. Maybe Israel are the three, but I think it will be for sure Switzerland and the better one between Romania and Israel who will come out that one. And then the final group, Portugal, with a perfect record, no goals considered yet. Um, Bosnia have already had a home loss to Luxembourg, so don't watch out for Luxembourg. I'm not sure if, how much I can trust Slovakia. I think this one is also more or less a free-for-all for the final spot with only Bosnia having secured a playoff spot. Ignore the part with the playoff. This is how it would, if the current standings would be the final standings, this is how the playoff may look like, uh, but ignore it. For now. So, match day five, and we're only focusing on match day five uh, now because I will do a review video afterwards. Uh, what are the big games to watch out for? Netherlands, Greece is for tonight. I also think Serbia, Hungary, although both are on a good, good way, is kind of an interesting one. Uh, France, Ireland, I'm not sure. I mean, it sounds good and there's some history there, but I think it should be an easy win for France. Then tomorrow, Georgia against Spain. I think that is a crucial match ma matchup. And Georgia gave Spain quite some trouble already in World Cup qualifying. Watch that spot. Uh, we also have uh, Slovakia against Portugal. Uh, potentially, that could be an interesting one. But I have, have to say, tomorrow, if you miss games, might be that, that, that one. Scotland, I should not no, no, forget, they will need a win in Cyprus to keep their hopes for qualifying alive, and they're looking good so. And then there's a the small matter of Turkey against Armenia, you know, a little bit politically uh, tense, that one. Uh, and then on Saturday, we have Ukraine against England, and Italy have to travel to North Macedonia. Doesn't sound like be much of an opponent. However, North Macedonia eliminated Italy. So they might be out for revenge and also Romania against Israel, as we said, this might be for a final spot in that group, already a pre-deciding match. Um, so these are for the first three uh, 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 days of qualifying qual qual the outstanding matches. As I said, I think it's Netherlands, Greece, that's, def that, 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 that's the mega stance for me to do to, tonight. But I also want to say, you know, the Ukraine, England, North Macedonia, Italy games. And the rest, I think you can choose how, whatever you please. I think Georgia, Spain will be an underrated one for sure. I want to finish it because, you know, with qualifying, we can also go for how will the tournament look like. And Germany has a home field advantage in these um, simulations. So similarly, at the moment, it's France ahead of England and then Germany, thanks to home field uh, advantage. But the German rating has been falling and falling and falling ever since it started. Germany is still the only nation that has qualified, although it looks really, really, really good for Portugal at this point. And France and England are also within epsilon of qualifying, as we say 
in the math world you see here a few uh, more not all of them have qualified i think uh, especially in norway they are considered strong but uh, here they're only on 20th and they might not qualify at all so uh, take the whole standings this is currently how it would work out but you know you still have to qualify to go further and i will update you on that one as well what games are you looking forward to over the next three days? Are you even watching? I personally, I will probably watch on every day a little bit because it is just fun to watch national NH games. It's, as I said, slower paced, a little, little, a little bit more relaxed, but I'm having fun doing so. Probably will do some short videos and then I will do a roundup after every full matchup of uh, those games. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!